Lenovo's Yoga series of laptops are really good, but let's be honest, a lot of us couldn't care less about the yoga part. In fact, we'd much rather prefer a laptop without the 2-in-1 functionality, and that's where the new Slim 7 comes to play. This premium laptop has all the best elements without the unnecessary 2-in-1 functionality that a lot of people like to avoid, such as myself. The configuration we have over here is rocking some of the newest hardware, including Intel's Core Ultra 5 series processor, 16 gigabytes of LP DDR 5X memory. We also have a reasonably large one terabyte SSD. And to go with that, we've got Intel's integrated Arc graphics. We also have Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5 standards on board. And finally, this is a 14 inch OLED screen. There is a lot to dive into with this laptop. It really is in a very interesting place and I'm really excited to review it. So let's get into it. I don't want to spend a ton of time on the unpackaging part because it's pretty boring. Lenovo doesn't really do anything special here. Once you open up the box, inside first and foremost, of course, behind a ton of protective packaging, you have the Slim 7 itself. And then past that, you have a all-in-one 65-watt USB-C-based charging adapter, which is pretty convenient, and that's pretty much everything. Lenovo Slim 7 has some of the best design elements in the laptop market. It takes some of the most iconic things about the Yoga series, like the rounded corners and edges, combined with the super sleek form factor, but takes it a step further because it doesn't have to bear the responsibility of carrying a dedicated two-in-one system, the hinge is slightly smaller, thereby making the device even sleeker in design. And also, it's a relatively light 14-inch laptop at just 3.15 pounds. Granted, it's not the lightest, but given how premium this thing is with a full metallic exterior, it definitely justifies its overall weight. Starting with the top side, Lenovo keeps things nice and simple, so this laptop does great in all kinds of business or casual environments. Not a whole lot to see here besides some basic branding in the form of a badge. Let's talk about the ports. So on one side, you have a high-end HDMI 2.1 port, which is nice to see, two fully loaded Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports. On the other side, you have a USB-A super speed port, and of course, a headphone jack. The only thing that's really missing here is a SD card reader, or at least a micro SD card reader. Given this is a high-end productivity laptop, that port really shouldn't be missing here. But other than that, things are looking pretty good. The bottom side of this laptop, as you can see, has a very simple metallic exterior. The lid is removable, and then you also have these linear air intake vents. Now, you'll also notice that the speaker system is bottom firing and the speaker grills are located on the bottom side here. When you unfold this laptop, you're like, wow, laptop manufacturers can actually make some pretty darn good stuff when they're not trying to cheap out. The Slim 7 is a prime example. That clean metallic exterior with that flat surface and premium palm rest just looks so majestic and is super well executed. At the center of which you have a reasonably large glass surface trackpad, which of course means that it's super premium feeling and additionally it has little to no flex because of its rigid surface type. And not just that, it's also pretty tactile and I definitely say this is one of the better trackpads I've reviewed on a premium laptop recently. I've always appreciated Lenovo for their emphasis on high quality keyboards on their laptops, but the Slim 7 just takes us to a whole new level, honestly. Firstly, you have nice large keycaps in typical Lenovo fashion. The font is easy to read and it's clear. The only thing really annoying here are those compressed up and down arrow keys, but I can tolerate those given the rest of the keyboard. Additionally, it is fully backlit and it gets pretty bright, all things considered. Since this is a 14 inch laptop, you will not be getting a 10 key number pad. And also there's no built in fingerprint scanner, though you do have IR technology. Now, what I love about this keyboard by far is the fact that given how sleek this keyboard, or sorry, this laptop is, you have 1.5 millimeter key travel here with a dish style keyboard, which means you get exceptional tactility. It feels great to type on. And honestly, this keyboard has no business being as amazing as it is given the form factor of this machine. It's a solid 11 out of 10 in that department. If you ever feel useless, just remember that the Slim 7 literally has two pseudo speaker grills on either side of the keyboard that aren't actually speaker grills, 
nor are they cooling vents, they're just there for no good reason whatsoever. Anyway, once you get to the hinge quality, it's pretty impressive, there's not a lot of wobble, it's well tuned, and honestly, I have nothing but good things to say, also it's got a 180 degree tilt factor. Now, as far as display fitting goes, you do have a nice glass surface finish, so no plastic clippings, however, you do have a notable chin at the bottom, which is odd, though the bezels are nice, narrow, and thin, which gives it a clean, immersive look, and then at the top, again, you have a fairly thin forehead, though you do get a bit of a bump around the center area, because that's where you have the full HD IR ready webcam, which is pretty decent in overall quality. Still watching, I'm so happy to see that. I wanted to request if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. It actually puts food on the table because this is literally my living and of course it keeps me motivated to provide more content just like this for you awesome viewers. So no more time wasting, let's continue. The display on this laptop is so close to perfect, but then Lenovo kind of just drops the ball out and over on a couple of things, which makes it a good display rather than a great one. So things start off perfect with that gorgeous OLED panel, which is stunning to look at. However, you only have a mere full HD plus resolution. A laptop like this should have at least had 2K or higher, though you do get a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, but then you only get a 60 Hertz base refresh rate, which is honestly just un acceptable 120 should have been the minimum here but then things get good again because you have a 400 nit sustained brightness rating with up to 500 nits with peak HDR again amazing and then you also have a built-in blue light filter to make things even better you do have built-in touch captivity and the touch system is super responsive though keep in mind this is not a two-in-one device you should get yoga if that's what you're looking for and then we come to the color accuracy which is stunning as well you have a 100% decent CIP3 color gamut rating and of course also 100% sRGB rating. This is a great laptop for creative needs like photo or video editing thanks to the high degree of color accuracy. A quick recap of the performance specs we have here. So we do have Intel's Core Ultra 5 series on this machine though you can upgrade that to a more powerful Core Ultra 7 processor. Additionally we do get 16 gigabytes of LP DDR 5x memory which can also be configured to a higher 32 gigabytes and then we do have Intel's integrated arc graphics. Now day-to-day -day performance on this machine is obviously going to be pretty darn good as you'd expect, web browsing, word crunching, all easy peasy. More demanding activities performed quite well such as programming for example and code compilation which was a smooth breeze even at 16 gigabytes of RAM for this laptop. 3D blender animations are also quite possible, though of course you will get some frame drops and lag, but still a viable workflow. Even 4K multi-layer editing seems to be really good. This is the first laptop I've actually reviewed with a Core Ultra 5 processor that isn't performing worse than the 13th gen i5 or i7 chip. You've got smooth frames here. There is the occasional delay in playback and some frame drops, but again, given that we're editing in 4K multi-layer, performance here was decent, which to me proves that with more optimization over time, we will see core ultra cedar processors outperform the 13th generation i-series processors, but at the time of this video, that's still kinda on the fence. Gaming performance, again, Intel's ARC graphics here are phenomenal given that they're working in an integrated capacity. We were able to sustain 60 plus frames per second at upper medium settings with games like Fortnite, which really isn't something a laptop like this is expected to do. A lot of the performance success here is attributed to the thermals of this laptop, which are honestly impressive. So under unrealistic peak loads, this laptop only hit a max average surface temperature of 38 degrees Celsius with more realistic sustained loads around 35 degrees Celsius. These are unheard numbers for Intel and it definitely shows that the core series has come a long way into improving heat efficiency. Now fan noise is equally as impressive. Under more sustained workloads you'll stay around the mid 40s decibel wise and then under absolute peak loads you hit like 49 decibels which again is a pretty reasonable number. From a self-upgradability perspective, it is imperative you get the right configuration of RAM for your needs because RAM is entirely soldered. It cannot be upgraded in any way or form, unfortunately. As far as the storage goes, you do have one M.2 2280 slot. However, that's already preoccupied, so you'd have to replace the existing storage if you want to upgrade. And that's pretty much it for upgrade options. You've got a peppy 65 watt hour battery here, which actually gives you an impressive 10 hours of runtime. 
time on general productivity type of tasks. I say impressive because the previous generation would get you around seven hours. So this is a pretty nice surplus in contrast. Now speaker quality here is just outright horrendous. I don't know how it's okay to label this as a Dolby Atmos certified speaker system. It's really not. There's no depth, there's no bass, there's a little bit of distortion, higher volume levels, and it doesn't get very loud to begin with. There's just nothing good to say here. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Watch out for her dark side, yeah she got some sharp eyes See her for the first time, never let her out my sight I just wanna stay up, look at you all made up Dirty thoughts are seeping to my mind, I can't wait up with a $1,100 price tag for the Slim 7 configuration we have here today, make no mistake, this is very much a premium tier machine. Though, retrospectively, it's still a lot cheaper than what you find with some of the Yoga series of laptops and some other premium laptops in general, while still getting the latest configuration from Intel with their new Core series. Additionally, you've got stunning build quality here, everything from that full metallic exterior to that high quality track pattern, exceptionally well done keyboard just make this an absolute awe-inspiring machine you also get a gorgeous oled display though of course there are hidden flaws like a lower resolution than expected and a base 60 hertz refresh rate however despite these things this laptop has a lot to offer and is definitely one of the best laptops you can get at this price point in my opinion at least at the time of this video anyway do i think this laptop is overpriced i'd say it's right about where it should be and i definitely thing it provides you with some phenomenal performance it's the only laptop i reviewed so far that doesn't have any notable thermal implications which in itself is a pretty impressive feat and shows that lenovo definitely thought out the thermal engineering for this machine overall again if you can afford this laptop and you're looking at a high-end productivity machine i can wholeheartedly recommend it despite the minor flaws that i mentioned in the review let me know your thoughts on this machine if you're interested in getting it i'd love to hear all of that and as always if you enjoyed the content please consider subscribing to this video and liking the content. It genuinely helps me grow. Catch you in the next one.